told you it was the wrong size. Oh, well, well, well. Looks like we got another set of gaming interested eye papers. Yeah, you want to hear about some vintage video gamery, don't you? Yeah, I thought so. Well, my name is Cowboy Crutches. Want to counter the want to counter the crutches? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But that's also my last name. You see, I stubbed my toe on a daggum armadillo. Little armored shell devils. You know, they're native to Texas. You know, if you were gonna make a video game about one of these roly-poly little western creatures, wouldn't the most logical platform be the Japanese family computer game system? Hold on, am I reading that right? It's only on a, a Japanese thing? That's right. Armadillo for the Famicom. Yeah, these are definitely too small for you. I don't know what you were thinking. You good? All right, well, thanks for the intro, and you'll, you'll get paid. All right. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Welcome back to... Fammy Corner, where we delve into the exclusive import gaming world of the family computer, an entertainment system before it was the NES. Today's Japan-only release from 1991, Armadillo, developed by AIM, the same company that created such action-packed adventures as Inspector Gadget on the Super Nintendo, or the Dreamcast's Tokyo Bus Guide. I know. High expectations. Armadillo was published by Information Global Service, or IGS, as it randomly appears in the game. Advertising pioneers, clearly. Now this is an action platformer where you take on the persona of a bipedal armadillo named Billy the Shell on a quest to rescue his girlfriend, Cheryl. Sh Cheryl, uh-huh, see it sounds like Shell a little bit. And Cheryl has been kidnapped by the evil Black Bean Gang. Who are those beans? More of a Pinto man myself. But she is the cutest gal in Texas, according to Billy. In Armadillo, you'll travel through seven worlds as you bounce and roll your way through the game. There are many similarities to Super Mario Bros. 3 in the initial design of Armadillo. You've got the worlds, you move through a map to select stages, some very basic things, move around during your travels, you wear red. There were enough similarities that this game was bootlegged into Super Mario Bros. 4. You may have even seen it before in that form. Pretty much just a very basic sprite hack. But this is not Hacky Corner, this is Fammy Corner. Starting up Armadillo, we've got a few options. Can even start a two-player game where the second Armadillo is wearing Green! Okay, now back it up. We get it, Super Mario Brothers. Then we have a third option where you can check high scores and... Uh, oh, you can, uh, you can save the game? Well, Armadillo does not have a battery backup, so how could you possibly save any information? Well, this is one of the few games that makes use of the Famicom Battle Box. An accessory that is attached to the front port, allowing saving and recording scores and some other features. When using the Battle Box accessory, you get four save slots for Armadillo. Very useful because this is not a short game. And perhaps we could delve deeper into the Battle Box in the future. But for now, let's make our way through Texas. The first level definitely has that Super Mario platforming style, so let's jump on these. Oh, oh, okay, it's not that much like Super Mario Brothers. I guess that makes sense. They are cacti. Using my armadillo brain and natural abilities, I must ball up and destroy enemies. Cactus included with my armored shell. So what is this, Super Mario Brothers or Sonic the Hedgehog? Hmm. An odd Texan hybrid, it would appear. Yeehaw! And I say Texas because World 1 is indeed Texas. With a nice barbecue stand in the background. Oh. Oh no, that's a uh, traditional Japanese-style sushi restaurant. Hm. 
which you can enter by pressing up. Inside you'll meet a well-dressed goat, who gives you various tips about the game, such as some blocks have dice hidden inside them. Side note, forgot to mention this, for some reason you have to mark each blank square of your travels on the world map until you reach an actual stage, an action stage. You can't advance until you make a button press, there's nothing there, it doesn't do anything. Now if you go over to two player mode, it's that way because you take turns a la Super Mario Bros. 3 and you mark each square to initiate the end of your turn if you haven't actually made it to an action stage. No, no, that's still stupid. There's zero reason for that. Seems like a huge waste of time. Oh, that's right, because it is. Oh yeah. Now back to useful button pressing. Press B to curl up into an armored ball and attack enemies. Or you can bounce. The longer you bounce, the higher you bounce. And when you transform back into normal armadillo style, continuing to hold B allows you to sprint. Pressing A jumps, and even though you can't jump as high as you bounce, there's a lot of hang time in your jumping. When balled up, the rolling and jumping is not as smooth or easy to control, but that's the trade-off. You're protected and can jump higher, but it's a pain in the shell to control. The shelled protection only goes so far, though, as each stage is timed. So if you don't reach the goal in time, you will die. You start with five lives, and we've got one hit kills. Awesome! Yes! Love it. In ball form, you can break blocks. Oh, that's kind of like that uh, other game with the guy and the, and the mustache and the coins and, and stuff. Now, when I say you can break blocks, I mean certain blocks. They are signified by the slightly darker outline around them. And just like our goat buddy told us, you might find some dice inside. You can carry five to the end of the stage. Ooh, I wonder what they do. We shall see. <laughs> <coughs> You'll also find special items hidden inside little gift boxes, like an armadillo's favorite beverage, coffee, which gives you some extra time on the clock, just like in real life. Now you can find a shoe, which slightly increases your speed, a stopwatch, which freezes enemies for 10 seconds, very useful, a power drink that makes you invincible for 15 seconds, even more useful. A reverse drink that swaps your invulnerability to normal mode instead of when you're balled up. And a mirror, which gives you an extra life. Alright, I gotta cut in here. That is super clever, making the extra life look like a mirror, because you look into it, see a reflection of yourself. You, you get an extra self. Yeah. You can also uncover special transformation items inside the gift boxes. Become a kangaroo, giving you extra height to your jump. A fish, allowing you better control underwater. Hmm. Hmm, does feel a little Kirby's Dream Land 2, you think? If there's a hamster form named Rick, I'm all in. Well, sorry, there is no hamster transformation, but thank the sweet lord, Snail. Yes, the glorious snail mode. You... you see what it does. I don't like snails. Or slugs. Ugh. The final animal form is that of a bird, allowing you free reign to fly wherever you wish. But unlike the other animal forms, this one is temporary. The others last until you get hit or die. That also goes for the umbrella. You can get an umbrella, or as Kirby calls it, the parasol, because the game seems to have a few Kirby-esque features. Even some of the music has that Kirby feel. It's really good. I fell in love with the music after finishing the first stage. Why is that stage clear music so good? Billy the Shell is celebrating, of course, by splitting into a bunch of miniature versions of himself, as you do. Quick tip, if you want them bonus points, you best smash them shrooms at the goal and get them shrooms at the back. Them's the good shrooms. And it is time to trade in those dice for bonus points. The amount awarded follows casino rules, you know, two of a kind, three of a kind, straights, full house, give you more points, you know. 
And there's definitely a gambling sort of casino theme running throughout the game, as you'll see later in World 3. But how do we beat World 1? Tejas. While navigating each stage, there are many ramps for you to speed roll down, but for some reason, the slightest touch in any direction and you'll start bouncing all over the place. The stages have what appear to be cool little ramps and rounded paths for you to zoom through in your rolled up form, but they don't work that way. It's like every two feet there's a dip in the road sending you to bump town. And the only way back up ramps is to climb them on two feet, or, or hooves. What do armadillos have? Paws? Paws? Well, whatever they are, he's slick on them. Yeah, cool guy. Billy the Shell can also hug the edges of walls, sliding down slowly, and almost, I say almost, being able to wall jump, but not really. It's only possible to ascend when you're dealing with parallel walls, and even then it's a bit tricky because the controls... It, it, you just wait. Stages are also broken up by doorways leading to other areas which you enter the same way you enter the goat-owned sushi restaurants or bars. It's a kid's game. But where's the big boss castle, or final stage? Well, you see that little sheet-looking thing with sunglasses on it? That is a member of the Black Bean Gang randomly moving around the world. Depending on the path you take, you could completely avoid certain stages by getting to the boss early. Then you'll enter this creepy little gang hideout to fight. Remember, you are an armadillo, and he can't do nothing to you. Unless he shoots you with his bullets. That'll do it. That'll kill you. So quickly smack into him. And he did. He did. Not too difficult, considering he's just a snake in a suit. Doesn't give him a lot of movement options. I mean, maybe he's a lizard, but that just doesn't work as well for the reference I'm making. But don't get too confident. As the goat says, bullets can hurt you. Just like Jessica did. Who's Jessica? But forget that girl, and let's hop in a plane destined for World 2. Monument Valley. Cheryl's our girl now. A oh, good god, that alligator's mouth is amazing. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Other enemies include raccoons, uh, stick men, oh, and birds that uh, poop on you. Literally. And these are straight up brown dog turds coming at you now. I'm, not, I'm no scientist or animal biologist, but as far as I know, bird poop poop. Don't look like that. I mean, check out my car. See, that's what it looks like, and I would know. Birds love my car. Oh, yeah. You also got porcupines, por por porcupines, porky, porcupines. How do you, how do you say it? No, I, I know how to say it. I, you say it. I want to hear how you say it. I, I know how it's supposed to be said. My favorite enemy by far has to be this guy. What in the heck is going on there? Look at that guy. I'm thinking I'm thinking he's a flamingo, but just the way he struts around with that neck hooking, man, he's straight crooked. Look, what I'm trying to say is I need him on a shirt. I need that. I could spend all day talking about the enemy variety in Armadillo. It's very impressive. No reskins either, just fresh enemies as you move through each world. It can be tricky though, like how do I get into this little hidden area? I want those gift boxes. There's gotta be some way. Oh, poop alert! What? Huh? Oh, oh, oh! My apologies, those aren't bird turds, they're apples. Apples. Shrinking. Apples. Of course. In miniature form, you can access certain areas to make your life easier. Much, much easier. Like extra lives or items for bonus points. See, every 30,000 points you get another life, so it's worth it. You'll probably rack up 1-ups pretty regularly, but trust me, you'll need them in the later levels. You might even discover a Martian, and if you hop in this spaceship, you can travel anywhere on the world map. The only caveat is you can't land directly on the boss. After battling a chicken in a suit, you'll fly to Las Vegas, where temptation awaits. Oh, oh, think of Cheryl now. Here, the dice-based casino theme really gets pushed. You've even got slot machines you can access for bonus points, and some of the levels are made up of pinball machine parts. Dang! How many games 
are in this game. Sonic the Hedgehog again. Super Mario, Kirby. I mean, even Kirby has a ball form like Billy does. Though, Kirby's ball form, which is a minor ability in those games, is one to two thousand times better than an armadillo. And it's your main form of attack. Somebody needs a chill pill. Calm down, game Dave. <laughs> okay. The controls in this game start out okay. The early stages have some slightly tricky platforming elements, but you can mostly finish them without much of a headache. But then the developers decided to go nutso and not give you much more in the way of control. It's too sluggish. It's almost like the game has some unnecessary built-in input lag on your character, preventing you from ever being precise in your movements in ball form, or just making plain old regular jumps. Ugh. <laughs> Look, I'm not some angry gamer geek. I'm not mad. I'm just... I'm just disappointed. I'm sorry to go all dad on you, but that's... That's who I am now. Compounding these problems, it was 1991, and I'm sure the game was pushing the Famicom to its limits. And it shows, but not always in a good way. The information screen at the bottom even glitches out sometimes, a bit distracting. And the slowdown, oh sweet buttery Jesus Lord, it's almost unbearable at times in this game. Movement would feel so much more fluid and punchy if it weren't for the tremendous amount of lag. G -g 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 -g. It doesn't help that the play control is already super floaty. These controls are just inconsistent. Sometimes I'm vibing on it and things feel great. Other times I'm just trudging through the sludge of this game and that is not fun. I haven't been this frustrated with a Famicom game since... I dare speak its name. Hana no Star Kaido. The Blossoming Star Highway. If you don't have all the required items when you reach the exit, you get kicked out of the building and have to do it all over again. <laughs> so, let's finish this game up, I guess. Uh, you with me still? <laughs> cool. There's still a lot to love here. I mean, the bosses are animals in suits. I love it. I love it so much. Now I want a shirt of the whole Black Bean Gang all posed up. But who is the leader of the Black Bean Gang? A mystery up until this point, but we soon discover it's Fat Modillo. He's just a fat armadillo with some glasses on. You'll meet up with him for the first time after traveling through San Francisco. But he's got no time to deal with you. He's got to get to Mexico. So he drops off Mecca Fat Modillo for you to deal with. Man, that's very insensitive. Even the advice-giving goat fat shames him throughout the game. It's kind of rude. Well, Mecha Fat Modillo is one of the first boss fights that actually involves some strategy until you bounce behind him and... Yeah, that's all you need to do. Just get behind him. After tracking him down to Mexico, Fat Modillo will bomb your plane, causing you to land in the Amazon jungle instead of Lima, Peru, where he's headed. Now, I love that when you defeat a gang member, you pick up a letter given to them by Fat Modillo that details his next move. These little moments give the game's story a little bit of much-needed appeal. And when you finish the Amazon jungle world, which oddly retains a lot of elements from previous stages, including the pinball machine parts, you finally make your way to Lima. Not easy. Like I said, the platforming in the game gets worse and worse, and the stages get longer and longer. It easily took me an hour to get through Lima, but upon reaching the boss fight, Fat Medillo was nowhere to be seen, and I had to fight a crazy-necked bird. Fat Medillo has left for his final destination, New York. Hmm. Huh. Ending a game in New York. That is... That is familiar. Anyway, combining elements from all the past stages, New York is a painful set of stages, and unfortunately, there's no path around any of them. It's a straight shot to the end. Could use a Martian right about now. You'll need all your platforming skills and transformation skills 
to get through the stages. And be glad you've racked up all those extra lives, because you'll be tearing through them to finish all six stages in New York. Luckily, it's all worth it when you reach the final boss, Fat Medillo, as he Bowser plops his butt all over the stage and attacks you with his giant, rolled-up, blue-armored shell of glory. difficult battle, but enjoyable. And isn't that what video games is? Defeating Fat Medillo reveals his true intentions. He simply wanted to have his own girlfriend. Ah. Now that's creepy. You don't kidnap women. Don't do it. Just don't. Well, after a long walk through the credits, you finally rescue Cheryl. you get an amazing ending theme song, you get yourself a gosh darn smooch on the cheek! Now I'm no armadillo, but I have a feeling it would take a lot of courage and mental fortitude to kiss that thing's cheek. Hmm. You won't be seeing me do that. So let's all give Cheryl a big round of applause. Come on, it's impressive work. If it weren't for the sluggish controls and horrendous slowdown, this would be a solid platform game on the family computer. Like, it's really fun when everything's working. Wait, sorry, let me modify that slightly. I hate this game! The controls are just, they're so frustrating. Sure, in the first couple of worlds it wasn't too bad, but then, oh, oh, we start moving into ridiculous platform angles that require a trigonometry textbook to be up your butthole. Whew. All right, things got real there, sorry, but the deaths, death after death after death after death after death, you just don't have the tight control needed to deal with these jumps and movements. Plus, you're constantly shifting between multiple modes to control, to dodge enemies, or attack enemies, or access certain areas. You, you never truly get comfortable with any of them. And I'll be honest, I don't know if you could get used to them. It's just, it's sloppy. And when I say I hate this game, I don't mean I hate this game. I mean I hate that I could have loved it. There's a lot of charm here in the graphics and the story. It's, it's funny. The characters are likable. The worlds each have a good theme as you travel from place to place. And the music, wow, the music is really good. I mean, I was impressed by the stage clear music, but that ending theme, good lord, that is on my playlist already. But this... This is a game, after all, and if it feels like you're holding a farmed Atlantic salmon that just doesn't want to be a part of your sushi roll, you know, you, you know that was a fantastic analogy. <laughs> Wait, hold, hold on a second. New York. The game ends in New York. I should have known, oh my god! Just like the ending of my most hated game, Hana no Star Kaido, that I never got to experience. In the good ending, you get to go to New York with your newfound fame. What did I miss? What did I do wrong? Do you know? Please tell me. I have no idea. I even suffered through this game a second time, being careful not to kill anyone or use any continues, just collecting the CDs and special items, and I still got the bad ending. Well, guess what? There is no good ending. Because to see New York, sorry, Appletown, you have to suffer through one of the worst games on the Famicom. And one of the worst games I have ever played. It's all come full circle. Two 
not-so-great Famicom games. But we have to realize that not everything in this world is perfect. Some things are downright hot garbage on a slice of shrinking apple turd covered pizza. But we move on. The Fami Corner is not tainted, and more import goodness still awaits us. <laughs>